So this is section 4.3, which is trig trigonometry extended, the circular functions. We're going to talk about trigonometric functions of any angle, trigonometric functions of real numbers, periodic functions, and the 16-point unit circle. Okay, so we touched on this in 4.2, but every angle has an initial side and a terminal side. So the initial side is where you start measuring from, the terminal side is where the angle ends. And we talked about in 4.2, we talked about that if you have um, an angle in standard position, that means that the initial side is along your positive x-axis. Okay, we can have positive angles and negative angles, and they can look like the same angle. However, it's the direction that you measure the angle from. So a positive angle means you're going counterclockwise, like on the left here, and a negative angle means you're going clockwise. So for example, we could say, let's use our right angle. So this would be a 90 degree angle, and this would be a negative 270 degree angle. So they look like the same angle, they're they are the same angle, but it's a difference in the direction that we are measuring from. Okay, so coterminal angles are two angles that have the same initial side and same terminal side, but yet they have different measures. So we find coterminal angles by either adding a complete circle or subtracting a complete circle. So we're going to either add 360 degrees, subtract 360 degrees, or add or subtract 2 pi, depending on what our angles are measured in. So we're going to find a positive and negative angle that are coterminal with 45 degrees. Okay, so I've got 45 degrees. So if I want to find a positive one, I would take 45, add a whole circle, and I get 405 degrees. So that is a positive coterminal angle. So 45 and 405 are coterminal angles. If I take 45 minus 360, I get negative 315 degrees. So negative 315, 405, and 45 are all coterminal angles. So they're going to all look like they are the same um, location, if we think about, so here's a 45 degree angle, so that right there is 45. That right there is 405, and that is negative 315. So all of those look like the same angle, but they have different values. Okay, let's just erase this here. Okay, so then we're going to find a positive and negative angle that are coterminal with pi over 6. So same idea, except this is in radians. So we are going to um, add and subtract 2 pi instead of 360. So if I add 2 pi, oops. So this is good um, to remember how to add and subtract fractions. Um, this, that comes in very useful when you're working on the unit circle and when you're working with radians. So if we think, um, if we turn... 2 into, I didn't need to erase that, 12 over 6, then we have common denominators and we can say, okay, this is 13 pi over 6. So if I have pi over 6 and I'm subtracting 2 pi, I can turn that into 12 over 6. So we would take 1 minus uh, 12 would be negative 11 pi over 6. So good practice adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, so second example is evaluating trig functions determined by a point in quadrant one. So let theta be the acute angle in standard position whose terminal side contains the point three five. Find the six trig functions of theta. So we're in quadrant one and we're gonna call this the point three five. So what I would do is I would drop it straight down to the x-axis and let's make this into a right triangle. So we know that the x distance is 3 and the y distance is 5, and we can find the hypotenuse using um, Pythagorean theorem. So this would be 3 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. We get um, 9 plus 25, so we get 34 
So C is going to be the square root of 34. So we're going to use that when we find our six, um, our six trig functions. So I'm going to put in here, here's theta. So we would say sine of theta would be 5 over square root of 34, which simplified would be 5 square root of 34 over 34. My writing's not the greatest right now, so cosine would be 3 square root of 34 over 34. Tangent would be 5 thirds. Then we have cosecant, which would be 30, nope, square root of 34 over 5. Secant would be square root of 34 over 3. And cotangent would be 3 fifths. Okay, so you can do that given any point. If you know which quadrant you're in, just by the point should tell you which quadrant you're in. Um, and then you can turn it into a triangle so that you can find your six trig functions. Okay, so trigonometric functions of any angle. So this is just summarizing what we just did. We know we can use the Pythagorean theorem or we can think about r being the square root of x squared plus y squared to find um, the hypotenuse. And then you can evaluate knowing just using SOHCAHTOA. Okay, so evaluating trig functions of a non-quadrantal angle theta. So these are the steps. You're gonna draw the angle in standard position. Be careful, careful to place the terminal side in the correct quadrant. Without declaring a scale on either axis, label the point P. So this is again what we did on that previous problem. Draw a perpendicular segment from point P to the x-axis. So these are all fancy, <laughs> fancy words of saying, if I have a point, there's my angle, drop it down to the x-axis, or if you're like in quadrant four here, drop it up to the x-axis. So you're always going to connect it. Um, we're going to have, I'll just draw these four angles. These are what we call our reference angles. But all of your four triangles in any quadrant is going to form the right angle with the x-axis. So make sure you're not connecting it with the y-axis. Um, and then it says to use the sides of the triangle to determine the coordinates of point P, making them positive or negative, using the coordinates and the definitions to determine the six trig functions. Okay, so example five is evaluating more trig functions. We're going to find sine of 210 without a calculator. So if we use what we know about 210 degrees, so if we think, okay, 180, I know that it's going to be in this quadrant. So that whole angle right there is 210. I know 210 is 30 degrees past 180. So we know that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we know our short side is 1, and we know our hypotenuse is two, and our long leg is square root of three. Now I also know that I'm in quadrant three, which means the x and the y are negative, so we don't have negative side lengths of a triangle. I like to mark them as negative so that I make sure the sign of my answer is correct. So this would be, so if we talk about sine of 210, Sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so it would be negative one-half. Okay? So our next example is to use one trig ratio to find others. So we're going to find sine and cotangent by using the given information to construct a reference triangle. Okay, so for A, it says that we know cosine is negative eight seventeenths and cosecant is less than zero. So what that tells me is that cosine is negative and cosecant, which is like sine, is negative. So if both cosine and sine are negative, that must mean we are in the third quadrant. So, and then the trick, I will tell you the trick really quick. So something to remember um, is all, this might not be true, but all students take calculus. So if you think of that as your quadrants, so all means all your trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. 
only sine is positive in the second quadrant, only tangent is positive in the third quadrant, and only cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So that all students take calculus can help you remember what's positive where. Okay, so cosine is negative 8 over 17. So that means that adjacent is 8, hypotenuse is 17, and we know that 8 is negative. Okay, and so now we need to find the other leg using Pythagorean theorem. So we can say 8 squared plus b squared equals 17 squared. So we can take 17 squared minus 8 squared and then square root it and we get 15. Or we're going to, I'm going to label it as negative 15 because we know it's in that third quadrant. So that means that, let's label theta here. So sine of theta would be negative 15 seventeenths. And cotangent of theta would be, so tangent would be 15 over 8, so it would be 8 over 15, and it would be positive because tangent's positive in the third quadrant. Okay, and then the second half of this is tangent is negative 1 half and cosine's positive. So if we think which quadrant has a positive cosine and a negative tangent, that would have to be quadrant 4. So I'm going to put theta right here. So tangent is negative 1 half. So I'm going to just put the 1 half part. So it's opposite over adjacent. So that's a 1 and a 2. I know my y value is negative in the fourth quadrant. I'm going to keep my cosine, my um, x value positive. And then we can use Pythagorean theorem again. So 1 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared. So our hypotenuse ends up being the square root of 5. So sine would be negative, so I'm bad habit here, okay, sine is a function of theta, so it needs to be sine of theta is equal to negative 1 over square root of 5, which would turn into negative square root of 5 over 5, if we multiply top and bottom by square root of 5, and then cotangent of theta would be negative 2. Okay, the unit circle. So the unit circle is a circle that has a radius one and is centered at the origin. So um, it simplifies our life when we are talking about the unit circle. So because that we can take away the whole hypotenuse piece because if anything is divided by one, it is itself. So if we know that the radius is 1, it allows us to use the coordinate values to find our sine, cosine, and tangent. So what that means is that on the unit circle, and I need you to know this is not in all cases, this is only when you're talking about the unit circle, sine is just going to be y, cosine is just going to be x, tangent's going to be y over x, which means cosecant's 1 over y, secant's 1 over x, and cotangent's x over y. So a periodic function is a function is if there is a positive value c such that f of t plus c equals f of t. Basically, a periodic function is something like if you think about our unit circle, if I go around the circle again, I'm going to end up at the same point. I'm going to go around the circle again. I'm going to end up at the same point. When we get into graphing, we can think of a periodic function like a wave function. We know that if I start here at zero, I'm going to go complete one period of the function and end up at the same location. So um, sine and cosine and tangent and cosecant and secant, those are, and cotangent, they are all periodic functions because we know that they're connected to the unit circle and we know that with a circle you keep going around and around and end up at the same location at different points in time. So this is the unit circle. If we were in class, I would make you memorize this and um, I'm still going to make you memorize it in some fashion because Everything that we do with trig comes back to the unit circle. And if you know this, 
without having to constantly be looking it up. It's going to make your life so much easier. So a couple things while you're memorizing the unit circle or while you, as you are learning it, um, we have connections between, I don't want to, might just still be able to see the angles. Okay, so if we focus on those four angles right there, I want you to notice that their points all have the same coordinates. The only thing that changes is whether or not they're positive or negative because we know in the first quadrant, both co coordinate or values will be positive. Over here, we'll have negative positive. Then we'll have negative negative, and then we have positive negative. Okay, so those four are all going to, those are all our 30 degree angles off of the x-axis. So they all have square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. And I have other tricks that I can't really show you through the video, but I can show you in our Google Meets that I'll talk about as well. Okay, then if we go to, I'm going to use another color. So here's our 45 degree angles. So if we look at our 45s, these are the easiest to remember because they have the same x and y value of square root of 2 over 2. So again, you need to just basically, if you memorize the first quadrant, you're going to be good for the whole unit circle. Okay, and then we have, let's use blue here. These are our 60 degree angles off of the x-axis. And they are the same numbers just flipped of our 30 degree. And we know that because of our 30, 60, 90 triangles. Okay. And then the easiest ones to know are your um, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Okay. As far as the angle measures go, let me tell you my tricks for the angle measures. Okay, in the first quadrant, you'll know you'll notice. So first of all, you'll notice that the the denominators in every quadrant go six, four, three, moving away from the x x axis. So we have six, four, three, six, four, three. Okay, so in every quadrant, you have six, four, three as your denominators. In the first quadrant, the numerator is pi for all of them. In the second quadrant, the numerator is one less than the denominator. So 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6. In the third quadrant, the numerator is one more than the denominator. So 7 over 6, 5 over 4, 4 over 3. The fourth quadrant is the weird one. And the only trick, I guess, is to take the denominator, double it, and subtract 1. So 6 doubled is 12, minus 1 is 11. 4 doubled is 8, minus 1 is 7. 3 doubled is 5, or 3 doubled is 6, minus 1 is 5. Okay, so again, I have other tricks I will share with you at the Google Meets, but the more you can memorize this, the better life is going to be. Okay, thanks.